Hey guys, it's me, Liz from Lizby's Does Floss Too. <sighs> it's been about a month since my last video and uh, I've just been stitching and not really feeling like uh, making a video. So, we're going to film one now. I have not been keeping track of uh, what I've been stitching like I was last year. I even set up a calendar in my um, GoodNotes app so I could keep track of everything again and I just not once have picked it up. So, <laughs> haven't been doing that. Um, worked on, looks like six things. I don't think I've worked on anything else. I just kind of woke up from a nap, but I just don't feel right. I don't feel good. I feel blah. Um, so let's see. We'll start with this one. Uh, this is the geisha that my mom got me for either Christmas or my birthday. Not last year, year before. And I just hadn't been working on it, hadn't been working on it because I, it was just filling in all the hair which is black and it's just so much and I just was sick of doing it so I kept putting it down and I talked about last time I'm like you know what I'm doing all this other stuff with color blocking why don't I just pick it up again so I picked it up again and this is how far I got uh, I still have to I've been basically telling myself I'll do a couple things of color and then I'll go back and do some black and then I'll do a couple things of color and then go back and do some black so this is where I got to. So I did some more black and then I came down here and did some color. So now I've got to go up and do a couple blocks of black and then do some more. But I got her whole face done. I just have to do um, the back stitch for her eyelashes. And then um, there's a bunch of back stitching around this uh, butterfly in her hair. And I did this little sunflower that's in this part of her hair. So that's how far I got. I got a decent amount done. And then this border, let me tell you, this border is going to be so repetitive and so boring. <laughs> so I wanted to see how bad it was going to be. So I started the border. <sighs> but she's coming along and since I did get sorry I can't stop yawning since I did get into the color it made me want to stitch it again so so there's that one and let's see oh sticking with the geisha theme we'll go on to Sakura this one is Sakura from, what's, what was that? <laughs> a crumb. Um, Autumn Lane Stitchery. And I worked on her a whole bunch. I wanna get this top part done so I can move my Q-snap. Um, so this is how far I've got on her. And she's amazing. So this is Sakura. Um, so I've been trying to fill in the big uh, parasol behind her and I've worked a little bit on her sleeves. Um, and then right here, these lines are supposed to be beads, but I don't have beads. So I did colonial knots with a toile. So it's like sparkly. And then this one was supposed to be like the oil slick kind of color of beads so I used uh, three different colors and of oh, DMC floss and made my own kind of oil slip color so it's a blue a purple and a green and then I did the colonial knots on that too haven't figured out what I'm gonna do with the big where the big bead is supposed to be I think I'm just gonna try to make like a I don't know, like a lazy daisy or something for the bottom of it, but that's how far she is. 
So she is really coming along. She's beautiful. Her face is just incredible. But I really would like to get the top of that done. And then, um, I only worked on this a little bit. It's hardly even worth showing. But this is the uh, bee that I found, um, was like, I don't know if it was clip art or like a vector or an SVG that I saw that was really cool and I wanted to stitch it. So I turned it into a cross stitch. I used wind stitch to turn it into a cross stitch. And this is him. I just started filling in, uh, this is where his wings are. Um, I need, there's two colors. I think it's number one and number two that I need and I didn't have number one or number two, so I just started on this one. But that's where one of his wings starts. And he is adorable. And then this is fabric flare. It's called Berkshire Hive. So it looks like a honeycomb. And then this is the one. Ooh. I should have brought coffee up or something. Um, this one is called, I think it's French Garden Sampler. Uh, I got this one from Inspire Uplift, which is like Etsy. Um, and I hadn't stitched on it in a while, and then I figured it's sitting here, might as well stitch on it. So, yesterday and the day before, I finished this little square, this tile. And then uh, I got like this part of the little border done. But this is really cool. I can't figure out what this one is supposed to look like, but something in a French garden, I guess. Um, so there's another diamond here. And then this section is like a two by two diamond. So it's a bigger one and it'll fill up this whole space. Nope. So it'll go from like this corner to this corner and it'll be like a bigger one. But it's really fun. Um, so I just hadn't picked that one up in a while. And then for like Wow. Uh, probably a week and a half, maybe even two weeks, I stitched on my Adventure Time. Now this is the one that is a Diamond Art Club diamond painting that is huge. It's so big, it covers almost my entire closet door. And I don't think I would ever diamond paint it because it's so big. Um, plus the fact that I'm not... I, I like diamond painting a lot, I really do, but I don't like that I have to basically spend all my time in my room because it's not portable. Like you set your stuff up, you can't move it and take it anywhere with you. Um, so that diamond painting is hanging on my wall. Uh, they Diamond Art Club has clear plastic, so you can still see. I can see the diamond painting and what it would look like if I diamond painted it. but. Um, it's just too big. I'll never do it. So I decided to chart it myself, uh, into wind stitch. So what I do is I took pictures, strategic pictures of the diamond painting and I graphed it and I am slowly charting 10 by 10 squares into wind stitch. Um, I have gotten all of the black. Um, it's a Mandy Manzano. So it's lots of black outlines. Um, I've got all the black all the way done. And then I have just a little bit left to put in the color. And here is what I have charted so far. Here's the diamond painting and what I have charted. So this looks like I've done so much, but I haven't. I think I'm at like 15%. But this is where I'm at. So, 
I had basically been telling myself I wasn't going to pick it up again until I finished charting it. Um, but since I went ahead and mostly finished charting it, I went ahead and started again. So uh, this is using the Royal Rose method. It's just mine's not like, I don't follow her rules completely. Um, so like this green section is like the last of the green for a while. So if I was already almost done with a color, I would just go ahead and go down and finish it. Um, and then like this yellow blob here, that's like the last of this yellow for a little while until I come over here. So I'm like, I might as well just do that little yellow blob. So I follow her rules, but not completely. Um, but it's just a way of parking. So um, this is what I've got. I was like here. So all of this I've done in the last, I worked on for like two weeks. And then I needed a break from it. So I put it down again and I'll pick it back up because I really like stitching. And then this little blobby thing, I was trying to figure out if I wanted to put a border around it or if I just wanted to do like a black back stitch. And I think I'm gonna do this around it. So it's like a giant smear across, cross and then like back stitch around that. So I think that's what I'm gonna do, but obviously it doesn't matter because I'm not doing that for a very long time. Um, and then this is the pattern. It's um, a giant cicada and I got the pattern. I bought it from Etsy. It's just the pattern came instead. It was like on like three different PDFs. It was split up into three different PDFs. It was a huge pain. So I went ahead and just recharted it into Winstitch so I could have it as one PDF and not have to flip back and forth through PDFs and try to figure out stuff. Um, and then I changed the wings a bit, but mostly this is the pattern. Um, so, uh, this is, I've already rolled, so this is part of it, and then I will show you the other part. So this is how far I have gotten. Uh, this little blob here is the exact middle of the pattern. So I've made it halfway down, but this is only 20... 3% of the pattern stitched. So I'm halfway down, but only 23% stitched because like 70% of it is down here. So um, I've been trying to go in and do, since I finished that much, I've been trying to go in and do the uh, black of the lines of the wings. But if I hold it this way, I can insert a picture of what the rest of the wings look like. So they'll be next to each other. So that is how far I'm at. <sighs> he really is gorgeous and I cannot wait to be done. Um, and I'm to the point where I think I'm gonna scroll again. Um, so next time I'll be able to go down farther. So I'll probably scroll so it's to like his butt. <laughs> um, but he's awesome. And I love him. Uh, this is 20 count uh, Cafe Au Lait from my Vintage Needle Arts. Um, I wanted to do it on 22 count, but uh, it's it squishes the stitches and it stretches out the holes of the fabric. So it was kind of bunching up. Um, so I did wait and get the 20 count. Um, so it'll still fit. Oh, and I did shrink the pattern a tiny bit when I did that. Um, so it will fit in my frame. This is how big he will be. Let's see. That's how big he's going to be. So, pretty exciting. Um, so.
so that's it. That's all I've worked on. I don't have any haul. Oh, wait, I do. I have one thing. It's not haul, but it's something else I worked on. So I had this thing. Woo! I knew those were going to slide. I don't know why I didn't take them out. Um, I got this a while ago, and it is um, a plate rack. And it was bamboo plate rack. Um, so the sticks were only about this long because it was for, you know, hang, sticking your plates straight up and down. So I got dowel rods so I can have it hold my Q-snaps. Um, so I made them long enough so my Q-snaps won't get the fabric pushed on them. Um, and then I can put it on my table and have a bunch of Q-snaps in it like so except that one just rolled off and then I was thinking if I make sure I get if I make sure the sticks are in good I could hang it on the wall um so I don't know if I'm going to do that or not but that's my other thing <laughs> Um, other than that, like I said, I haven't really gotten anything, um, not really cross-stitch related or really anything. Um, I got the colors so I can do, uh, the, uh, Christmas ornaments that I was going to do for Lulu and Goose. So I got all the colors for that. I did buy... I think I showed last time. I bought the pattern from Vivsters. Uh, it's called Sacred, Ge Sacred Geometry. So I got that. Um, and I think I probably have all the colors for that. Um, I don't know if I'm going to start anything. I haven't really wanted to start anything new. Um, even like looking on Etsy. like I, I see a lot of patterns that I save. But I haven't really been buying any patterns because I haven't really been wanting to stitch on anything new. Um, I've I've really been just hooked on what I've been stitching. So I just haven't found the need to buy anything. That's not necessarily burnout. It's just, I don't know. Plus the fact that I'm broke for the moment. Um, whatever. <laughs> Um, I will see you guys next time. Wow, this was a short video. Um, I guess that's all. Talk to you guys next time. Hopefully it won't be a month. Um, just depends on how much I stitch. If I don't stitch a lot, there's no point in making a video. So, see you guys next time. Bye.